The purpose of this documentary is to identify issues relating to a combination of water use, water availability and wetlands and water as habitat and how these are being affected by the creation and maintenance of the desalination plant at Kernel in Sydney. The desalination plant started operating in 2010 and was planned to produce 15% of Sydney's water. The Sydney desalination plant website claims that the organisation will monitor the marine environment three years before construction and will monitor for a following three years after commissioning. It also states that the marine species will remain protected and monitored. There has been a great deal of controversy, however, with regard to the findings of this report. One noted environmentalist and conservationist who disagrees with these findings is Bernie Clark, OAM. Bernie Clark, in 2010, the desalination plant at Kernel began operating. As a conservationist environmentalist of Botany Bay, how do you think this has impacted the environment? Environmentally, uh, we, that area was known as the Christmas Bell Plains. Beautiful flannel flowers and Christmas bells everywhere. And, and heath plants, some very valuable heath plant area. And from a marine aspect, uh, it's the most southern subtropical coral reef system uh, in the southern hemisphere, of course. Uh, and it has species diversity. Christmas bells, scientific name, Blantfordia nobilis, were just one of the species first collected by Banks, Cook and Salander from the Endeavour in 1770. The Royal Botanical Gardens website states that they once grew in swamp reservoirs in Botany Bay, but have now diminished in numbers due to urban sprawl. The government, when they decided on Tabagai as the site for the desal plant to um, process uh, the salt water into fresh water. They virtually took a wrecking ball and just cleared the bottom of corals and the habitat then for bottom dwelling fish such as the groper and russes. Very few places left along their coast that uh, are untouched uh, for these bottom dwelling uh, fish. The Australian government released a report in 2008 discussing emerging trends in desalination. In this, they have clearly stated that the desalination plant will be dispersing a hypersaline plume that will likely affect bottom dwelling species that live on the reef. Now the, the developers, they destroyed thousands of um, hectares of seagrass. Now seagrass meadows are the world's number one sequester of carbon gas. It lived, and seagrass has lived for thousands of years. And the biodiversity, one square mile of seagrass it produces 10 million prawns, including their larvae, and 90, 90 billion mollusks. Uh, so, terrestrially and environmentally, it was a disaster. To confirm what Bernie Clark has said about seagrasses, scientific advisor Tom Hold is also concerned about the impacts of dredging across Botany Bay on seagrasses, and particularly at Silver Beach, Kernel. In a letter written to the Minister of Planning, Frank Sata, he has said that he will further investigate and monitor the issue in order to protect the native seagrasses. The major project assessment on the Kernel desalination plant from the New South Wales Government disagrees and provides an assessment of environmental impacts on their website. In relation to what Bernie Clark has previously stated, the assessment relays that larger fish would be able to move away from the area, but invertebrates and reef fish would be affected. The New South Wales government are very biased in that they are considering mainly the economic cost and not the impact to the environment. Stating that only smaller fish and invertebrates would be affected is disregarding that they are the main source of food for the larger fish. Yeah. Hi, I'm Premier Barry O'Farrell. In my first 50 days in office, a lot of people have asked me what I think of this, the Kernel desalination plant. A lot of people have asked me whether or not I thought it was necessary. To that I would say no, it was a political stunt. Would we have been better off in encouraging more efficient use of water, especially in rural and agricultural areas? Absolutely. This image that you can see is my previous article from Assessment 1. Although Barry O'Farrell has stated that there is a huge cost involved in the operation of the desalination plant, New South Wales Finance Minister Greg Pearce stated in 2012 
that Sydney Water clients will be saving an estimated $50 million a year from the shutdown of the plant. The graph that you can see on the screen at the moment is from 2009 to 2014 and the capital expenditure in that time. The desalination plant at Kernel shut down in June 2012 as Sydney dams had reached a whopping 96% of total storage capacity. And you can see this on the screen at the moment. By now, you can see the controversy behind the Sydney desalination plant, although we do need to assess other desalination plants around the world. Saudi Arabia, for example, they have always had a freshwater problem. At one point, they have even considered to tow an iceberg from Antarctica to use as a freshwater source. Saudi Arabia has the largest desalination plant in the world and has 2,500 miles of water pipes. It generates 2,750 megawatts of energy to the whole of the country. Saudi Arabia is one of the poorest countries in the world in terms of natural renewable water sources and they do not have their own dams. In conclusion, was the Sydney desalination plant necessary? I think it definitely was. If Sydney's water was to completely run out, the area would need a backup supply. Was the desalination plant built in the right area? Absolutely not. It is located near protected site Tower Point Nature Reserve and is bordering on historical land. My main source of information is from Bernie Clark and he has provided extensive data on the environment in Botany Bay and he has lived in the area for most of his life and he has had a long career as an environmentalist and conservationist of Tara Point Nature Reserve. He is unbiased and I have provided other references that suggest his scientific evidence is true. Unlike Bernie, Barry O'Farrell is biased because he is a member of political party and must follow the entire party's view. He has also been worried just about the cost itself and the economics and not about the environment. He has also been an unreliable source as he has suggested that the Liberal Party's plan has been the right one. The Labor Party has also stated the same. There is no evidence suggesting the correct outcome. Bernie Clark, however, has always been an advocate for the environment and he has had a lifelong passion for Botany Bay. There are 17,000 desalination plants in the world, but only time will tell whether we will need to open our desalination plant in Sydney once again.